Hello and good morning everybody. Welcome to the Golden Silver Club end of week review. Today guys we're going to actually it's going to be a special on the United States Federal Budget Cuts 2013. This is going to be presented by myself, Phil Carr and joining me on the call Nick Kelsey. Today we'll be revealing the latest developments in the commodity markets and analysing the week's performance. So during the live session we'll cover an end of week summary for gold, silver and commodity currencies. We'll be looking at the top trades of the week. We'll be covering live market commentary and technical analysis. We'll look at the week ahead, so key events looking forward and of course um, we'll cover any Q&A as well during the course of this webinar. Okay, so really the headline news um, today on the 1st of March 2013, the US braces for 85 billion in automatic budget cuts known as the sequencer. So this is big news today and uh, really the federal, just a little bit more information on this, the US federal budget cuts are due to kick in today and that means that if the congressional leaders and President Obama do not reach a deal to avert the so-called sequencer, Due to that, the 85 billion worth of budget spending cuts will automatically they'll begin. Okay, so it's very important. This could have a negative effect on the U.S. economy. However, a positive effect on the U.S. dollar because the greenback is seen as a safe haven asset and bought in times of risk aversion at the moment. So, over the last 24 hours, the U.S. stocks have weakened whilst the dollar has strengthened even more. Gold is currently hovering around actually right now. I believe we're at 1,500, let me just check, 69 at the moment, um, as of uh, 11 o'clock in the morning. Um, supported, has been supported by physical buying from China overnight, which did stop it from um, coming down any more after yesterday's sell-off. And the dollar index is currently trading at a six-month high as of yesterday. So once again, this news really provided traders with several highly lucrative opportunities to short gold and risk-related currencies against the US dollar for significant profits. And uh, as highlighted, we'll go through some of our top trades of the week as well. So really, again, the big question is, will gold and silver prices find support at these current levels or continue to fall into next week? Okay, so a little bit of uh, background on myself and Nick. I'm Phil Carr, professional trader trainer and uh, speaker. I'm the co-founder and director of the Gold and Silver Club. I specialize in teaching people how to make money from trading some of the most lucrative financial markets in the world, so gold, silver, oil and forex. I've trained thousands of individuals to become independent traders, successfully manage their own investment portfolio. I'm responsible for the research and development of the Gold and Silver Club trademark strategies that have a tr proven track record of generating returns for traders. Also a regular contributor to a number of financial publications and speak at numerous trading seminars and workshops. Joining me on the call is Nick Kelsey, professional trader, investment analyst and speaker. He began his career within private wealth management in 2002 before making the transition into proprietary trading. Prior to co-founding the Gold and Silver Club, Nick spent over five years coaching professional fund managers and traders internationally for some of the world's top tier hedge funds and investment banks and through his first hand relationship with some of the world's most successful traders Nick discovered the formula, mindset and tools that give any individual the definitive edge to trade in any economy and also regularly writes for a number of global business and financial publications and appears frequently on financial television. So that's a bit of background on us, here's ourselves actually recently on Swiss TV, on Dukas Copy TV just giving our expert view on uh, gold and silver and some of our recent uh, press publications just as experts in gold and silver. So you're in safe hands today. Okay, so guys, we're just going to turn our eye and just have a look at the gold price at the moment before we have a look at uh, some of the top trades of the last week. So the gold price right now is $1,569 per ounce. So we have seen again, um, it's been a nice volatile week again on the markets. We did get the price um, come all the way up to uh, 1619 earlier in the week and now we're just back down to we hit a low this morning of 1564. We will go in and have a look at this in a bit more detail on the uh, the live trading and before we do so just go over some of the top trades of the week using the Gold and Silver Club signature strategies. 
Okay, so we've had quite a few very lucrative trades this week. Um, Australian Japanese yen was fantastic. That was a trade actually taken just uh, on Monday, Monday last week. And what you may have seen for those of you trading um, into the open on Sunday or had any positions um, just after the open, the Japanese yen was weakened over the weekend and a lot of currencies which are traded against this uh, Japanese yen pair they all spiked hugely on the open. So Australian Japanese yen was no different. It spiked about 90 pips on the open to the upside and came down, this is just on a four hour time frame you're seeing this, came down, consolidated um, throughout that evening. And we came up to a key level of resistance that offered a very nice um, trade setup and a good risk to reward. So you can see here where we entered uh, just to the top of this resistance at 96.89 and we sold short and came out there at 95.13 just for 176 pips. Um, so really nice risk to reward on that, 7 to 1 risk to reward, 26 pips for each lot we traded was $260 um, per trade in terms of risk and 176 pips uh, that we made on each trade there um, at a lot, so 1760 um, USD per lot traded there. So really nice opportunity there. You can see where Australian Japanese yen has been just moving sideways within that range and that was a really nice setup and it just reached that profit target just over a 12 hour period just on Monday. So that was beautiful. Okay, gold. Uh, we've had some opportunities to both go long and short gold. So Earlier on in the week, in fact, um, on Wednesday, actually no, this was Tuesday when the Federal Reserve, um, when the testimony with Ben Bernanke was speaking before Congress, we had some volatility and the price of gold came down, tested that 1586 key um, level of support, which is also a key price action level. And after it formed a really nice um, setup, we entered into that 1587 and just rode it up to the next price action level, which is 1616. So that was for a nice profit of 290 uh, points there, so 60 point risk. So each lot traded was 600 US dollars risk to make uh, 2,900 on each lot traded. So it's a nice five to one. We couldn't break through around the 1620 level. In fact, we were capped off. Uh, again, this level of resistance, if you look at the left hand side of the screen there, around about 16, uh, 17 level, we've got a very key uh, level of resistance there. We could break through it and this in fact was an opportunity to then reverse our position. So entering at 16.15 and just going for a sell short. So same risk on the trade, risking 60 points there, um, which is 600 US dollar per lot and uh, coming out with with back again at that same level of support 1586 okay so that was a 290 point trade just selling short gold in fact we've broken lower now and we've uh, we've come all the way uh, back down to where well, we're quite low this morning 1568 and um, yeah just black cat just jumping in there you've uh, been shorting gold since 1614. I mean, that's fantastic. You've uh, we've got some nice profits now. The price of gold is at 1567. So a very clear sell signal there um, that you can see on the screen around the 1615 level, just highlighted on the chart. And I'm glad some of you caught that trade as well because that was a really nice setup, very clear level of resistance, and it, the trade is moving really nicely. Uh, looking at Euro USD, so we had Euro USD. We had some nice opportunities to sell short. Uh, if you look at um, the level again, 1.3285, where support has become resistance, we had again a really nice setup there. An actual tweezer setup on the uh, candlesticks there. You can see highlighted just at resistance, and that was quite a straightforward trade. Just entering at 1.3285. Uh, risk on that was 31 pips. So each lot we traded. 310 USD risk on each lot traded there and that was to make 198 pips and all we did was trade it down to the next level of support, the next uh, price action level there which is at 1.3087 and that profit target was hit in just two days for 198 pips, so for $1,980 for a 6 to 1 risk to reward. And Australian dollar CAD, uh, we had a really nice short setup on this market again. Now we've been testing this level of resistance, which if you want to look at, we'll, we'll look at it shortly actually on our live um, trading room. But we've actually we've been hitting our head against this resistance um, since 2011. We've had a key level here around 1.0549. So we were watching for a, a sell short setup. We did get that setup. Um, 
at that particular level and we came down we couldn't obviously we were hoping to see if it would come all the way back down for another key price action level highlighted in yellow at the bottom but we actually didn't find the market didn't manage to get beyond its support level at 1.0462 but we're still happy with 87 pips on the trade risk of 30 pips each lot traded was $300 of risk for a reward um, of 86 pips or 870 USD per lot for a 3 to 1 risk to reward so just on euro there, yeah, this is where support has essentially turned to resistance there, very clearly defined uh, entry for that to go short. So I'll tell you what, with that, we'll, uh, we're well positioned to now move on to some live market um, technical analysis. Okay, So those are the top trades of the week and been a very profitable week with all this volatility. Um, so let's move across to my charts and we'll just um, make sure you can see those. So bear with me as I switch screens. Okay, so we're going to start off here um, looking at gold. So here we go. So gold, these are the key levels we've been looking at this week. This is where uh, we've had basically opportunities to go long and also reverse our position. You can see that on the screen. We've got a very key um, level resistance here at 1616, which is providing, been providing support. And we were looking at this last Friday as well. Look at sell short opportunities within this sort of 16 to about 16.13. Um, so this was our, our sort of area that we were looking to take advantage because the market on gold it's still very much in a downtrend. So this whole area here we were considering to just short the market on the right setup. We did get that that correct setup. So if we go back to the actual um, very quickly the daily time frame, we're below all the key moving averages here. We're very clearly just a downtrend still on gold. We haven't got out of that um, downtrend currently. So we, uh, you can see where we've got some really nice um, opportunities to sell short. Some of you are still in this sell short position. And you know, in terms of where the price is going to be going to next, there's not really a great deal of support at the current level where we are now, 15 and 67. Um, we really the, the level of support could be in the 1550s, 1555. I don't see there's much support to stop the price from going lower um, just this morning, although we could get some uh, strong buying in if we get back to around the 1550s. Uh, ideal profit target, and this is what from our analysis of the gold and silver club, what we would be um, really uh, quite keen on would be a price to come all the way back down to the 15 sort of 30 level. We believe that would be quite a, la a line in the sand, if you like, um, for gold. And we, we, so we, if we were to hold on to that level, we could see some really nice buying opportunities around the 1530 level, 1520 to 1530 level. And if the market was to break through those key levels of support, we could see uh, certainly the gold price, a lot of stop losses get hit and the price going much lower. So we will be looking out for that, but looking for setups around about those key levels, 1555 and 1530 at the moment. But market is, uh, is downtrending this morning. Silver, very interesting. Um, so silver's actually it broke through a level of support yesterday at 28.30. Now, what you'll see here is that we are touching right onto this trend line, which has been in place. We'll just go onto my uh, daily time frame. This trend line has been in place. This this lower supportive, well, downward trending um, trend has been in place since going back to 2012, and we are right at the bottom of this channel. We're we're also we're we're below all our key moving averages at the moment on um, on the silver market. But if we just bring it back to the four-hour time frame, clean up the screen a little bit, you can see where we're just bouncing right off the lower end of this trend. So this is quite important for um, silver to hold around the $28 per ounce mark. There's really not too much support below 28 for silver until you get back down to 26 to 26.75. That whole area where we stayed in for quite some time just last year. In fact, if I go back to uh, my other screen and have a look at silver, we stayed within that sort of 26 to 27 dollar range. This was throughout, you know, throughout June, July, August. So we could find ourselves back in that range if silver breaks below 28. So it is quite um, critical this morning that uh, that silver actually holds on to 28. If it is to get, uh, if if we don't, if it doesn't want too much technical um, chart damage done to it, silver breaks this 28 level, we could see the price get back back down towards 27, 26 level. So we'll be keeping an eye on that this morning. Uh, you can see here where we had a resistance um, trend line, which was just um, 
creating a bearish flag actually where the price had been sold off sharply over you know February we had this this rising channel which has then gone to break lower so um, certainly you'll be watching silver closely but um, nothing to uh, to make me want to take any trades at the moment okay so um, euro USD I'm watching very closely this morning so euro USD very simple uh, we've got a level of support where the price is at this morning so let me just draw that on for you Okay, so the level of support currently is at 1.3022. You can see, um, again, this was the level of support which became resistance where we sold off. And at the moment, again, we want to pay close attention to this. We are getting a, um, a doji form at the moment. So a doji where the price opens and closes at the same level, as I'm sure you know. And um, we got a bearish engulfing candle just uh, previous to that. We are seeing the price go a little bit lower. So for the euro this morning, it's important that it holds around the 1.3022 level. Uh, so we could really see either um, this uh, being held and the price come back up to within this sort of range, consolidation range here. If the price was to was to come up, we could see the price stay between that range. If the price does break down on Euro USD, though, uh, we haven't really got. Again, let's just go back and see what we've got as the next key level. Um, yeah, not a lot of support until 1.2875 there. So uh, again, we're at some quite interesting levels at the moment. So if we break through, you could see the market just move. There's not a lot of support now until it gets down to 1.2875. So again, another one to watch this morning. Euro definitely want to be keeping an eye on that market. Australian US dollar, um, we certainly, we've had some weakness, I mean you can see this is fairly evident here, just draw a very simple trend line, as the prices have been um, selling off, we're below all our key moving averages, and we are seeing some, some weakness on this, you can see where the price has actually, yeah it is certainly downward trending, I mean that's pretty evident, we can draw another trend line here, hopefully you can see that very clearly for Australian US dollar, so the price is literally, same, same situation really um, as silver and gold, I'm sure from coming on our previous webinars, you know the correlations that we've got with Australian US dollar and gold and silver, so what's happening here is we've just seen the market come up to the top of the trend line, sell off, come up to the top of the trend line, sell off, and we're about midway at the moment between these, uh, these trend lines, we broke through a level of support earlier on this week, so the same as gold and silver really, we're seeing weakness in this market at the moment, if you're in a sell short position from around around about the 1.0286, you've still got potentially some momentum to go to the downside now, and um, yeah, so that's what's uh, we're going on at the moment with Australian US dollars, so certainly weakness on this market just this morning. Um, pound, as we go to New Zealand US dollar, CAD first, oh, that's interesting, okay, so New Zealand USD is coming to test quite a key, hasn't had as much weakness actually as Australia's dollar, we have been selling off this market, we're coming to test now uh, a key level of support again with New Zealand US dollar, there we go, it's just coming down right now, this area here, where we've had these uh, bullish candlestick setups previously, which have given, so we're, we're kind of range bound at the moment, this market as well, between 0 0.8233 to 0 0.8312. Uh, market is now testing this level of support, so I would assume that we're seeing, let me just check, that gold is going lower at the moment. Um, yeah, it's 1,567, and uh, let's just zoom out a little bit on this chart. Okay, so uh, New Zealand US dollar, yeah, I mean, it's below all its key um, moving averages as well, and we're seeing currently there is there is some support here to be looking at at the moment. So I would keep a, an eye on New Zealand US dollar as well. Obviously, we're coming down, we're testing a level of support at the moment. Overall, there is weakness in this market, but we uh, will be interested to see if we get some support on New Zealand US dollar currently. So we can see we're testing 0.82341. Okay, so price is right at that level. So a lot going on this morning. There's um, a lot of key levels being tested right now. So pound dollar has had a sharp move to the downside today. Look at that. That's um, that is a very much a bearish engulfing candlestick. So let's just have a look at how many candles we are engulfing. Okay, so one. Wow. Okay, it's not looking good for uh, for pound dollar this morning. Just this morning, um, that's a bearish engulfing candlestick. So this uh, is very well. It's very bearish essentially. So we're actually engulfing one, two, three, four, five, six. 
Um, 17 candles to the left of that. We're very interested in the body of these bearing, these bearish candlesticks, um, and they need to be engulfing those candles just to the left of those. So we have actually engulfed um, a number of uh, candles just to the left. So that's a very bearish move to the downside with pound dollar. So I wouldn't be wanting to go long this market at the moment. Um, we've broken through obviously some key support here, which had been holding all week. And again, this is going to start looking a bit of a mess for you if I zoom out to this, but I will show you just briefly we know all the key moving averages on this market um, if we go to actually have a look at uh, where we could find support it's going to be quite lower I can't show you on this chart right now where that level of support would be let me just I'll just bring it up on another chart I've got here and I can read it out to you um, okay so another next real key level of support for this market is actually God, it's quite far away to the downside. It's going to be around 1.42168, and that would be from the current price going lower. Wow, that's going to be about seven, eight hundred pips lower. So uh, there is some some more nearer term support than that. It's just a key um, price action level at that level at 1.4833 and 1.7428, but not really major support. The real major support is is much lower. So we'll be looking, we'll be keeping a close eye on pound dollar. Um, you can see this market is, has been in a downtrend for quite some time now. Um, of course, we could always get a reversal based on. Um, on fundamentals and news, we, we may see a turnaround in this market, but technically speaking, at the moment, this is very bearish um, for pound dollar, and certainly this candle, big candle to the downside, is uh, is very bearish. Okay, and last, we want to look at USD Canadian dollar. So USD Canadian dollar, as you would expect, um, is doing the complete opposite to um, gold, silver, and uh, the commodity currencies, and it is um, finding it's breaking out to the upside. In fact, we've seen um, this market is continuing to break out. We've got this nice uptrend in place. This is just a very um, let's just make that a little bit more concrete here. Okay, that's not perfect. But you, you you can get the point there. This market, um, USD Canadian dollar, is continuing to break out higher, especially as the um, the US dollar index has been strengthening. Oh, it's above all its key moving averages. We've just we were looking to see, and in fact, we did catch um, a little bit of a, a sell short move on this market as well as it pulled back to this uh, sort of trend line here. We had a, uh, a nice setup to sell short, but it, it didn't turn out to be a huge swing trade. It was just a nice day trade, which gave us around 50 pips on the trade. Um, it wasn't the top trade of the week, but we still caught some nice, um, just a bit of a, a day trade on the, on the sell-off there. But now the market, as we expected, is continuing its uh, upward ascent. So US Canadian dollar still looking very much on the, uh, on the bullish side at the moment. Okay, so um, just because we've got some correlation with New Zealand US dollar here, just um, this is very simple, GBP New Zealand dollar, very clear level of resistance there, yeah. 1.83964, and we haven't been able to really break out that resistance level, so that's uh, just offered a nice opportunity to just sell this market short again, which uh, as the pound has weakened today, I've just seen we've moved into really nice profit on that. Um, let me just have a look at that. Yeah, that's been huge, actually. Um, fantastic. Okay, well, that we'll have to do that on our showcase, that on our top trades next week, because that's actually um, moved really nicely this morning. But that was just uh, just a simple example of a pound New Zealand dollar. Okay, guys, let's have a look um, at the uh, at the major news for next week and um, see what we can expect. But as you see, uh, for those of you who are day trading, possibly at, well, I'm sure a lot of you at home today, there is lots going on in the markets today. So um, certainly it's um, worth keeping an eye on these uh, setups this morning. Um, okay, great. So let me uh, go across to the news next week. Okay, so the week ahead, uh, key events looking forward that you want to be paying attention to um, next week. Okay, so we've got on, uh, well, today, 3 o'clock, this is going to, so we want to pay attention to the US ISM Manufacturing Index. That data is compiled from a survey of approximately 400 purchasing managers in the uh, manufacturing industry. So uh, with this, a higher than expected reading should be taken as bullish for the US dollar index, while a lower than expected reading should be taken as bearish for the USD. So 3 o'clock today, that could create some uh, volatility for gold and silver and the US dollar index. Uh, Tuesday, next Tuesday at 3:30 uh, a.m. For those of you who are trading Australian US dollar, 
you want to take note of um, AUD interest rate decision, very important. The Reserve Bank of Australia board members come to consensus on where to set the rates. So traders watch uh, with a lot of interest rate changes closely, um, of, of course, uh, as short-term interest rates are the primary factor in currency valuation. So a higher than expected rate is bullish for the AUD, while a lower than expected rate is bearish for the AUD. And that's important because uh, Australian US dollar is correlated to gold. And uh, Wednesday at uh, 3 o'clock, uh, we have the uh, USD Canadian interest rate. So the Bank of Canada Governing Council members come to a consensus on where to set the rate. Uh, that's important for those of you trading USD Canadian dollar, of course. So a higher than expected rate is bullish for the uh, USD CAD, while a lower than expected rate is bearish. And that does have an inverse correlation to gold. And uh, ECB interest rate decision, the sixth members of the European Central Bank, this will be next Thursday at 12.45 p.m., um, executive board and the 16 governors of the euro area central banks vote on where to set the rate. So again, a higher than expected rate is bullish for the euro, a lower than expected rate is bearish for the euro, and that's important because the euro is correlated to gold price. Um, still, we do have some correlation. Uh, we're seeing weakness in euro over the last few days, same on gold and silver. Uh, Thursday at 1.30 p.m., I have the US trade balance. There's a lot of news coming out next week which is going to affect the US dollar and gold and silver. Um, a higher than expected reading should be taken as bullish for the USD, while a lower than expected reading should be taken as bearish for the USD. And that's important again because USD is correlated to gold price. And of course, as some of you have mentioned, next Friday, 1.30 p.m. is in fact US non-farm payroll. It's not today. Um, it's not on the 1st of March today. It's in fact next Friday, the 8th of March. Um, so US non-farm payroll, this measures the US employment change in the number of people employed. That's a job creation is an important indicator of consumer spending. So a higher than expected reading should be taken as bullish for the USD, while a lower than expected reading should be taken as bearish. And all of you um, no doubt, um, well, you'd, all, all of you know that this is a very important news announcement for the currency markets, for gold, for silver, massive um, impact this announcement has, very volatile. So uh, next Friday, the one to watch as well at 1.30 p.m. Okay. Excellent. Um, great. So just before we do that, do we expect big moves with the US um, sequencer? Yeah, potentially um, we do. I mean, we're looking at, we're, we're very close in a lot of these markets, just to answer that question, going back to you know where, where the price of euro is at the moment at a key level of support, where we're looking at uh, silver in particular at a key level of support. So we are really looking to either hold or break these levels at the moment. Um, we've got some um, New Zealand US dollar, so at a key level of support. So yes, we are potentially expecting some um, high impact moves today. We shall see how those uh, pan out. Now, of course, to request information on our gold, silver, and forex trader coaching program to uh, get more information, um, you can go to our website as always, www.thegoldensilverclub.com forward slash course form, or contact us at office at thegoldensilverclub.com. You can telephone us on the numbers on the screen, so either our London office on 0207 193 or our Asia office, which is 852 8191 uh, so do make sure you can get take advantage of that on just learn to trade on our website and you can uh, get additional information by filling um, that form out and of course as a lot of you on the call do um, if you subscribe to our newsletter you'll find this very useful just for free weekly gold silver and commodity currency news live market analysis and uh, more detail about the markets and that is a weekly um, email that you will get okay fantastic we look forward to seeing you all um, at the same time next Friday. So that will be at 11 o'clock uh, next Friday. Of course, have a great week's trading. And we'll catch you here on the next one. Okay, guys. Speak to you later. Thanks. Bye-bye.